According to the BBC's Early Years Guidance, parents should examine their attitudes on race if their toddler only has white friends. The guidance was in the BBC's Tiny Happy People website, which includes advice for parents on discussing race and religion with children. Some educators say the resource is not impartial. Joining me to discuss this is Alka Segal Cuthbert from Don't Divide Us. <laughs> Alka. Thank so you. Perhaps mm -hmm. you could talk us through precisely what happened. These are guidelines that have been issued by the BBC, which are effectively telling parents to, to watch out in case they've, they're harbouring a racist in their family. Is that right? That's right, yes. It, it, um, it comes on the back of their, uh, their tiny, happy people mm. uh, guidance for parents that I believe the Duchess of Cambridge was instrumental in setting up, which is quite ironic because the um, teacher educator involved, Tanisha Hicks Beresford, I believe has written a blog saying that all the, that the royalty is all the royalty is racist, but here she is um, oh. working with the BBC on this uh, on this uh, thing that is indeed it's... saying that um, you know that no no toddler is racially innocent. We've seen this before. I mean, there have been uh, many activists and academics who've been trying to say that that even babies can be racist. Yeah. Yeah. Um, strikes me as nonsense, isn't it? It, it is absolute nonsense. It's also really contradictory and illogical because here they are on the one hand citing highly discredited uh, psychological research into bias and discrimination, mm. um, you know, studies that the own researchers have kind of distanced themselves from. Yes. Um, and they're saying, you know, look, even babies can see race. And yet, you know, a few years down the line, you see educational material saying, we have to teach children how to see race. You're thinking, hang on, yes. what's going on here? Do they see race or don't they see race? Well, there's all sorts of incoherence within this, this movement. There is. It is utterly incoherent. And I think the main thing about the um, BBC guidelines is that this, isn't just cut, this hasn't come out of the blue. The kind of official talking to parents has been really set in place largely through sex and relationship education mm. that predated the race stuff. And now the race stuff is just sort of coming in here. And, uh, you know, aside from the nonsense about, you know, checking your children's friends, you know, do, does, your fr do your, does your child have enough black friends? I mean, how's that going to work if you live in the middle of Wales or somewhere where there just aren't a lot of black people there? Um, aside from that, it's the, it's the thing that slipped into parents. You know, oh, you know, you might want, you know, to be kind, you might want to check your unconscious bias. You know, to be kind, you might want to you know, think about how you talk about these things. So it's intruding into the intimate sphere of the family. And that's really, really not on. That's Why quite is dangerous. it, though? I mean, all of these things you're describing, these are highly, highly contested ideas, right? These notions of unconscious bias. I mean, we know this from the studies that unconscious bias training doesn't achieve anything, right? So with that idea, then there's like concepts of, like, white privilege, uh, the Robin D'Angelo idea that uh, that uh, every human interaction is underpinned by white supremacy, you know, all of this stuff, which they're treating it when they implement these policies as though it's settled, as though all of that is true. Well, no, it's not. It's That's a, an yes. aspect of this religious movement, or this quasi-religious yeah. movement. Yeah. So why is that being implemented as policy? Well, I think it's... Um, I mean, it's interesting. You say it doesn't achieve anything. It doesn't achieve anything in terms of its stated aims of, mm. you know, trying to sort of... A, create wholesale social progress. It does achieve quite a lot in terms of informal inhibitions, right. informal kind of gaslighting, of informal people. It creates an atmosphere where, you know, people check themselves all the time. I mean, just the name Black Joy, right? I mean, who wants to be against Black Joy? So, so right, right from this, part, this was another story this week that where uh, someone has said that we should introduce the concept of Black Joy yeah. into the classroom. Yeah. What was that about? What were they saying? Oh, my gosh. Well, um, <clears throat> what this, I th the reasoning behind it, I think, really it rests on the idea of um, in 21st century Britain, you know, really multi-ethnic, where most of the, mo you know, really egregious, shocking um, instances and manifestation of racism don't really exist anymore. Not to say it doesn't exist, but in the way that I experience it and lots of other people experience it, it doesn't. Uh, many people are uh, very OK with interracial relationships and etc. In this context, they're saying that um, non-white children have to... It's almost like have to have a, a legacy, a racial legacy, that the part, you know, either from the past they suffer and to compensate yes. from this, they have to have the racial opposite of racial joy, i.e. black joy, which is really stupid because... 
um, it's stupid for two re it's stupid and wrong for two reasons. Sort of ethically, it's it's doing it's forcing that burden of representation on non-white people. Yes, and it's assuming that somehow we lack the imagination and the intellectual wherewithal to be excited and enjoy education as it is. I mean, if you have good curricula and you have good teachers, a teacher will bring joy to the whole class, and not just joy as it happens, because education means frustration and anger and disappointment as well. So it's not like a kind of massive therapy, feel-good session. Education's hard, but you have, you have solid, educationally worthwhile content. You have teachers who know what they're talking about. You generally, you kind of got to like children. I mean, obviously, if you yeah. don't like children, you wouldn't be a teacher. Um, I don't know. I know some teachers. <laughs> well, you would hope yeah. so. You would hope so. <laughs> and also, teachers need a little bit... They need a bit of freedom to try out different things, but they're going to lose that freedom if they don't speak out against this because they're going to lose parents' trusts. I mean, it's very sad, particularly, the, you know, because the end point of this stuff does seem to be racial segregation, tr encouraging children to see themselves first and foremost as a skin colour mm -hmm. and, to, and to see, you know, white people generally as oppressive, uh, oppressors and, and other people as uh, those who are oppressed. Utterly narcissistic. The idea that you can only learn if you see someone of your own skin colour is absurd. You know, you, you, it's absolutely absurd. You look at children... Um, young children will identify with anything, right? I identified with a wooden puppet in Thunderbirds when I was young. <laughs> as you get older, you know, as you get older, you begin to get socialised more. You, 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 and your imagination kind of does shrink a bit because you're thinking about the world outside. And then you can argue there's a case for reviewing the curriculum, looking yeah. at it, making it, improving it to make it not more representative of the yellow person there, the brown person there, the mid-brown or the black person there, but to actually make it more truthful. Yeah. Sure. You know, and that, well, that is what I hope the government is going to, to do, and I hope it keeps its nerve on because this. Because there's a grain of truth with, with the decolonisation idea, which insofar as there are some writers and artists and voices who were pushed out unfairly, yeah. and, that, and it's fine to redress that, that but that's not what we're talking about here. That is absolutely not what we are not talking about here. That, that is a, a perfectly respectable and legitimate intellectual educational task yeah that is not what is happening no. that really is not what is happening and you can see that it's not what's happening because when they say oh we're going to include writers of you know we're going to include more writers of color we're going to have the gcses now include 25 percent more writers of uh, who are not white and you look at what they're the, you know the, 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 what you find this is meant to be enriching right and expanding the imaginative content of of education, and what it's actually doing is just introducing a set range of authors. You look at the most of the lists, and it's the same writers all the time. And it's not just their skin colour that's important; it's the fact that they all espouse this version of race, racism and anti-racism. Yes. You know, you don't get the different voices there. You know, there are. No, it's not diverse. No, it's not. It actually reduces diversity. Yes. It actually pushes towards a, a, a real conformity. Um, and you're part of Don't Divide Us, of course, um, and would you like to tell us a bit about what Don't Divide Us is trying to do in this yeah. current climate? We, so we're a campaign and our focus is on education and schools because we think that's, like, hugely important because right? everybody, everybody goes to school. Um, also, a lot of this stuff is not that evident. It is happening. We know it's happening, but it isn't like America where it's really clear-cut. Mm. So our campaigns are really... We're trying to, um, first of all calling for transparency, for, for we want schools and local um, councils to be very open and show, make available their, when, their material when they're teaching things that are controversial, right? Mm. Um, uh, so if any teachers or parents out there are worried about material that they're getting or being asked to teach, we have had teachers say, you know, I don't think I can stay at this school anymore. I'm being asked to teach things that are just against my conscience. So if you're worried about that, please do do um, check in, check the website, get in touch, find out more about our campaigns, support us. What's it's the website? Yeah. It's um, don'tdivideus.com, yes. Yeah, don'tdivideus.com. Yeah. HTTP for that. And you can also on Twitter, which is at Don't Divide Us Now. Yeah. Uh, and it's very much worth checking that out. I think you're doing fantastic work. Uh, Thank you. I'll say good everyone.